Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Mudd a fan of South Plains politics. Here's your talking points for this week. If you're a Republican state who just votes for Republican candidates, voting is easy. Just click the straight party vote, right? Well, be prepared because your experience we're going to take a lot longer soon. And maybe the wait times for veterans doctor visits will get a lot shorter soon. A first look at Lubbock's bigger and better VA clinic that a lot of folks have been fighting for. From the studios of KMAC Television in Lubbock, your local election headquarters, this is Talking Points with Brian Mudd, brought to you by Capital Mortgage Services. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Also this week, the rest of the story. We're about a week from the start of early voting, and there are signs that voters are fired up a little. The November election usually brings out a few more folks. The new voter registration is up. We'll talk about some of the reasons for that later, but... There's no doubt that this is always the people that are involved that make an election exciting. And it's also the people affected by that election. You, the taxpayer, and even those who can't vote. Talking about your kids. The Lubbock ISD Board of Trustees ready for you to vote on its $130 million bond package. And so is the Lubbock business community who sees the deal as its own investment. KMAX Tori Larned was there for a recent endorsement by the Chamber of Commerce. If voters approve, Lubbock ISD will use the $130 million bond to upgrade school facilities, build a new elementary school, update academic program facilities, and a big key component, put $50 million towards safety and security. Our students, our families, our teachers, our community demands that we have as safe and secure campuses. The Chamber of Commerce considered the impact this bond would have on the community before giving their support. Our board is committed to anything that supports education, the advancement of education, and certainly with our young students and safety being a paramount of concern. Back in 2010, the $198 million bond election was close. It passed, but Superintendent Kathy Rollo says athletic facilities and new technology caused some concern. This time around, she hasn't heard any backlash. We are the second lowest in the county as far as our tax rate, so we believe the children in Lubbock ISD deserve the same things that children in other districts have. LISD says by not packing on extra taxes, it'll ease voters' concerns and get them on board. When you have uh, revenues and a balance sheet that will support debt, versus having to go to tax increases, you, you have a pool of money, if you will, that you can use for that purpose. That is KMAX Tori Larned, and you know, another big initiative that you're going to be voting on in November is for the big new multi-purpose dirt arena. Randy Jordan here is the chair of that steering committee. Good to see you. Brian, good to see you. Thank you for allowing us to come on. Well, we, we'd love to have you. You know, the, we have a location, we have a concept for how the facility is going to be used. To take us through that a little bit. Awesome. Uh, quite quite a process that we've gone through in the last 60 days to go from uh, from the for actually longer than that from the May 5th vote of where the people said Coliseum's gonna gonna be abandoned and and so what what's the what's gonna be the alternative so our group come together and we started working and and uh, bringing this multi-event center to to fruition uh, this past week we did make the announcement that we have secured a, a site it's gonna be at the corner of North Loop and North University. Uh, if you visualize with me, there's a stripe store right there on that corner. Mm -hmm. This will be just northeast of that stripe. So we've secured a 100-acre track there. And we feel like uh, one of the things around when we talked about location and we looked at very, a lot of places around Lubbock uh, was, um, for, uh, first of all, affordabil affordability. Mm -hmm. Second thing was um, uh, accessibility. And then finally, visibility. We wanted this to, to certainly with something we could afford and some place that people could get in and out of and then certainly that people could see. So we feel like that location uh, does, does all of those things. You've said this is not a government project per se, so county commissioners will have to find a group to run this. Is that right? That is correct, and I anticipate that we'd work together with the uh, commissioner's court on, on that. On that, When we say not a government entity, what we've heard from the people, a couple of things. One, we don't want to don't want to do anything with property taxes. We don't want to increase those. Mm -hmm. uh, second thing is we'd rather that the government entity, whether it be city or county, not operate it. So what do you do? I think the way you do then is to work with uh, the, the county because the county, if, if, when this passes, the county will be responsible for the collection of those tax dollars, that venue tax, if you will. 
and then they will have that ultimate responsibility for audit and so forth. So there will be coordination from that, but as far as the day-to-day -day operations, the management, these things, that'll be, that'll be with the 501c3 nonprofit board of directors. You're a banker, so you know about how following the money works. Yes, sir. A lot of people want to know, this is tax money being used, and we prefer to know who's going to be accountable for specifically how that money is going to be spent so we could vote him out of office maybe if we Certainly. have to. What do you say to folks who have questions about how that'll work? That's with, a great question. That? And, and one that's a, as a, a taxpayer and one that, that is a you know, Lubbock County property owner, I want to know too, mm -hmm. um, that, that certainly that money, the, the operations, maintenance, and so forth, that, those dollars that are generated by that uh, hotel occupancy tax can only be used for that venue. So the nonprofit will be, be working on this on a day-to-day -day basis or on, on a deal there with oversight to some degree by the county because the county ultimately has got those tax dollars. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about a combination here of, of, uh, of folks that would do that. So the accountability of that is twofold, the nonprofit board and also the commissioner's court. So there's, a, there's a, uh, certainly some working that has to be happening there. So could county commissioners, if there's a crisis of some sort, then say, sorry, we got to move some of that money elsewhere. Good luck finding some donations. No, sir. Okay. The statute uh, by the state that was enacted many years ago is very explicit about how those, those uh, venue tax dollars have to be handled. They cannot be put into the general fund. They cannot be used for anything other than that venue. So if there was a crisis, if there was something there, they can't mix and mingle those. So those tax dollars have to be put into a separate account. Uh, the control of the currency is very clear about that. The statute that creates this venue uh, opportunity for cities and counties is very explicit about how those funds can be used. You've had some serious donations. You know, I was mentioning that. How's that money be used? Really, really good. What What we heard from the people, Ryan, was that we felt like there was a need. We, the, we felt like with the Coliseum going away, okay, what are we going mm -hmm. uh, to do? Lubbock's the largest uh, city in the state of Texas that does not have, that will not have after the Coliseum goes away, a multi-event center that would handle some of the events we're talking about. So the need is there. The second thing is no property taxes. We don't want you to make do any property taxes. And the third thing was do that. So to try to make sure that we never have to go back to the county for any type of operating maintenance or anything like that. We felt like the best way to do that would be to go to the private sector and say, folks, we need some help. We need to create a trust, an endowment, mm -hmm. call it what you will, a firewall. And so we've, we've had great response from a number of different folks to create a, a minimum of $10 million endowment that'll be sitting there to help us with interest money, earned off of that to help any shortfall that we might have because our goal is that we never go back to the county to ask for operating expenses or to, to ask for, for anything. We, we want to do this with that venue tax dollars and have that cushion over here to help us to make sure we don't do that. Sounds like the ducks are in a row. Randy Jordan, congratulations on some good work. Let's see what the people say here coming up. Brian, thank you. And again, I just encourage everybody to vote. It is a big ballot on November. The early voting starts mm -hmm. October the 22nd. It is a large ballot. It is lengthy. A uh, number of items on there. And I just encourage people that have an interest in Prop A, and we hope everybody does, that they will they will scroll down to those props. And you got two great uh, propositions on there. Mm -hmm. Ours is the first one, the Expo Center, and then the LISD bond, which is a great bond. Uh, a lot of people worked hard on that. So we'd appreciate everybody's vote. Thanks for everybody's patience, and we're taking this one step at a time. So thank you for allowing us to come and share the story. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, Brian. And with that in mind, let's do this week's poll question. Do you plan to vote to raise the hotel motel occupancy tax to pay for that new multi-purpose arena? Talk to us on the KMAC News Facebook page on everythinglubbock.com. Click on Talking Points. Give us your opinion. Straight ahead, the fallout from the Kavanaugh hearings could extend into South Plains voting booths. And we're coming down the home stretch of the latest campaign season as candidates start to bring you their final points. Starting with five good minutes with District 84, candidate Samantha Field. Next on Talking Points.